When we paint miniatures, we first need to get them ready, which involves getting them built and then undercoated. So in this video, I want to show you the best way to get your miniatures ready and make them a lot easier to paint. This is going to be an easy to follow step-by-step -step guide to building your miniatures, creating sub-assemblies and how to get them undercoated. As well, I'll be talking about all the different products and how to use them so you have the confidence and knowledge to go away and get your own miniatures ready for painting. Welcome to Tabletop Ready. My name's Michael and I want to show you how I get my miniatures ready for painting. If you enjoy my content, I would love for you to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. It really helps get my content out to more people. And if you want to help support the channel and what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon which I'll link in the description. I really do appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to creating all the content on the channel. And it also allows me to keep making improvements to the quality of the videos I make for you. And I really massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people who've made this tutorial possible. And I would especially like to say a massive thank you to Gibby Tyler, Simon Lai, Paul Cairns and Jerome Cremont who have recently become a supporter or has donated to the channel. It's really appreciated, thank you so much. In the first section of this video, I'm going to show you how to clean up and assemble your miniatures and show you the tools and glues we can use. What I'm going to do in this video is show you how I like to build and assemble my miniatures. Everybody's different. But hopefully I can give you some ideas and some things to think about when building your own miniatures. When we open our box of miniatures you're going to find a number of sprues your miniatures are still attached to. And I know it's tempting to get stuck in and start cutting the parts off the sprue but take some time first of all to go through the instructions. The instructions are full of information you'll need to build your miniatures. Each part is clearly numbered with detailed images showing you the best order to put the parts together and you can also see the different options to how you can build some of those miniatures as well. Whenever we're putting miniatures together, we want to take our time and make sure we understand the instructions before we start building anything. Doing this is really going to help us avoid making any mistakes. First of all, we want to make sure you have the correct part, which will be numbered so we know which part is used for which step in our instructions. And once you've made sure this is the right part, we can use a pair of clippers to remove it from the sprue. When we're using our clippers, we always want to try and cut a little distance away and keep the flat side towards the part we're removing to avoid damaging the part. The leftover connections can then be removed once the part is no longer attached to the sprue. You'll find it's a lot easier to remove them more cleanly this way than it would have been if they were still attached. Once you've done that, take a look at each part and you'll notice that where you've cut the connections it doesn't look very good and you'll also see mould lines which we want to clean up. When it comes to cleaning up the messy areas and mould lines, there are a few different tools we can use. First we have this scraping tool. This is a great tool which gives us a lot of control. You can be very gentle with it, but you can also be a lot more heavy handed to remove more material if you need to. The shape allows you to work on flat edges and curved edges. Something a lot of people will be more familiar with is a craft knife, which can also be used to scrape, as well as cut away any leftover sprue connections. Just be careful when using one. And something else I personally like to use is a file. Here I've got a needle file, and this is great for getting into awkward areas and is a more delicate approach. I actually like to use all of these tools because they're all really good at doing different things and we should never limit ourselves to only doing something one particular way. Take your time when cleaning up your parts for assembly. We only want to use a small amount of pressure when using our tools so we don't remove any excess plastic we shouldn't be. You can either cut and clean these parts as you follow the instructions or you can cut all the pieces off that you'll need first and clean them all together. Just make sure you keep the parts organised. Personally, I like to remove and clean up all my parts first because I like having everything ready when I'm putting my miniatures together. Let's talk about the different kinds of glue that we can use. The glue mostly used to stick plastic parts together is known as poly cement or plastic glue. This type of glue is specifically designed to work with plastic by melting the contact surfaces creating a weld between the two parts. And once it's dried it creates a very strong bond. 
The other most common type of glue that is used is super glue and this works by reacting with moisture making it very sticky forming a bond holding both parts together. Once the super glue is dried this bond can be broken quite easily with enough force without damaging the parts. But before we actually apply any glue it's a good idea to dry fit the parts first before we commit to gluing it in place. This way we can be sure we have the right part. When you put your miniatures together there may be times when you want to leave some parts separate to make painting them easier. Get into those places that would normally be difficult to get to whilst painting. For example, this fully assembled Space Marine causes problems when it comes time to painting anything behind the gun. By leaving the part that is getting in the way separate, we can easily get to the places that need painting without any trouble. It's up to you how many sub-assemblies you create to paint your miniatures, but we don't want to overdo it as it can become very overwhelming very quickly. When deciding what sub-assemblies to make, it does take some experience, but the main thing to think about is whether something's going to get in the way or not. So once you've built your miniatures and you've got your sub-assemblies, it's going to be really difficult painting these parts without them being mounted onto something first. And something I like to use are blocks which you can get from any generic tower building game. Buying one of these tower games gives you a good amount of these blocks to use and it's more cost effective and you can even find different sizes. To attach our parts to these wooden blocks we can use super glue. And because of that easily broken bond our parts are easily removed after we've done painting them. For some parts it can be a little trickier to attach them straight to the block this way. So let me show you how we can use our sprue to make things easier. Our sprue is great for creating posts and pegs to mount our sub-assemblies and parts to. All we need to do is cut up the sprue using our clippers, keeping this little nubbin on the end where we can attach things to. The nubbins can also be used on their own to help elevate parts from the block, giving us better access to things like heads. We can super glue the bits of sprue in place to make it more secure so it doesn't move whilst we paint. We can use either super glue or blue tack to attach our sub-assemblies and parts in place depending on what you prefer. Creating these sub-assemblies does take more time and effort, but it really does make a difference in helping us paint our miniatures. Something else I want to cover before we move on to the next section is when we have finished painting our miniatures, you may have layers of paint from the undercoating and painting process, but we can easily scrape away any paint from areas that need to be glued. Now we have our miniatures built and sub-assemblies made and mounted, let's move on to getting them undercoated. In this section of the tutorial, I want to talk about undercoating your miniatures so we have them ready to start painting. We're undercoating our miniatures because this is going to help our paint adhere to the plastic better. Without it, you may find it tough to paint straight onto the plastic. But once it's painted, it could easily be rubbed off and it may get ruined through general use. For this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use a spray undercoat because that's how I like to undercoat my miniatures. Using the sprays can be a little tricky, but there are some things we can do to get the best results from using them. To start with, I like to attach the miniatures to something I can hold on to, so they can be moved around and rotated. Here I'm using a cheap plastic ruler, sticking the miniatures to it with some blue tack. And before we spray, we want to make sure to read the instructions and understand the dangers of using aerosol sprays, which are written on the tin. So let's go through the actual process of spraying now, because it's a good idea to go into some detail. To start with, you always want to make sure you spray outside or in a well-ventilated area. The temperature of the tin can also affect how the paint sprays, so having your tins around room temperature is ideal. Now we want to give the spray a good shake for two minutes. This will ensure everything inside is well mixed, especially if it's been sitting around for a long time. Now you're ready to spray, you want to keep a distance around 30 centimeters or a forearm's length between the tin and what you're spraying. You'll want to keep the tin moving while spraying and use short controlled bursts. This will ensure you get a nice even coverage and prevent the paint building up. And when you're done, make sure to let the undercoat completely dry before doing anything else. It can take some time and practice to feel really comfortable spraying your miniatures, but even now I can still mess up, so don't worry. Now we have some miniatures that are ready to be painted and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to get your own miniatures ready for painting. 
and I've got plenty of other tutorials showing you how to paint them, so go check them out. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.